Hello everybody, welcome back to another edition of the Modicon M2, 2, 1. I'm your host, Leandro Mada, and in this video what we're going to see is a quick introduction of the PAD system that we have in the Modicon M2, 2, 1. So let's go to the presentation. The idea of this uh, presentation is to quickly give you an idea how the control system that we have seen in the previous presentation can be linked to the PAD configuration that we have in the software. Okay, so I'm not going to go into many details in this presentation. Okay, I just want to identify the different parts and then in different videos what we're going to see is to go into details uh, in each part of the PAD configuration. Okay, so let's continue with this. So in the previous presentation we see uh we saw um a control loop system okay where you have the set point coming from for example an hmi or a different uh unit kind of unit then we have the signal coming from the process using a sensor okay and then we have in the control in the plc our control law okay that based on these two signals i'm going to have an output signal that will affect the the actual process and then with the feedback it will do something and so on so on so on so now the idea is to show you how the different components of this control system are linked inside the function block that we're going to see so inside the ecostructure machine expert basic the software to control the m221 we have a function block called pad and it depends on which instance we have a different number over here okay so this is the function block but in order to control this function block what we have is a PID system this PID system will help us to um, configure the different parts for the control loop system that will affect our process okay so this PID system will be an impact on the different parts of the PID, so it will affect the KP, the TI, and the TD, the components for the PID, and also will affect the signal output because we have, uh, we can have an analog signal or we can use a PWM signal. Okay, so both with modulation. So instead of using analog, we use a digital signal, and we'll also take a look on which is the how are you going to escalate the analog signal coming from the sensor if we need to do something else and then along with the PID we have the desired output is going to be our set point so this beta system will take a look to all the different components of the different of the control system the closed loop system so it's going to be much easier for us to identify and work with this so in order to add this PIDA system and to add our function block, we need to configure the PIDA system before using the function block. So, what we need to do is to go to Programming tab, select Tools, select the Software Object, and then the PID. Once you select the PID, you should be able to see these PID properties with all the different instances available from the PID. PID. Once you click on the configuration, you should be able to see the PID assistant and the number based on this instance that we have. So let's just take a look, a quick look into the software, which is in my other screen. Yep, there we go. So if we go to programming, you should be able to see emptiness over here. So tools, software objects, then here PID. Here you can see the difference PIDs available so instance available for the PAD. So if we go to configuration, we should be able to see the PID and the number of the PID and then the assistant. Okay, and here you have different tabs. Okay. So what we're going to see later is the different tabs, how we can configure and which is the real mean of all these kind of configurations. So if we go back to the presentation, okay. So I just want you to identify how the different tabs are linked to the um, control um, loop control system okay so the general part of the PIDA system will be linked to how i want to control the process okay you can use PID, 
between ID plus auto tuning or, or a mix over there. You can use PI, PID, and PI and auto tuning. Okay. So basically, it's that we have a different stuff over there, but to just focus on the mm, overview, I have a main idea. Then we have the input configuration. This input configuration is related to the um, to the variable that you are sensing using a sensor, okay? And then having an um, analog value in the controller, okay? That analog signal that coming from the process is the one that's going to be configured over here, okay? How you want to scale in and how it's going to be the variable that you want to read. Then we have the option for the PNAD, and this PNAD will affect all different constants that we have on the PID and also we take a look on the set point that we have for the um, um, for our process to have okay along with this PID there is also the sampling because the sampling on the PID is also important but we're going to cover that later and then depend on the configuration selected on the general part we have the possibility to use the auto tuning that will affect some of the variables on the PID, okay, the constants, and basically this auto tuning, what it does is to, depend on the configuration that we have, okay, is to reach uh, different, uh, it will generate the signal in the output, our controller, to reach two different levels, and depend on the time, and some other variables, how it works, depend on that variation on the, over the time, it will calculate the the three um, variables that you need for the PID. Need to check if it's two or three, but we can we are going to cover that later. So the last one is the output. That the output basically will help us to to use an analog signal or use a digital signal in case we want to use a PWM. Okay, so this is how this PID system is linked to the control loop system that we have okay and it's important to know how each part of the PAD assistant is linked to the to our process so once we have configured this PAD using the PAD assistant we should be able to call the PAD like this so just quickly go over here I open this so I'm going to use uh, PAD here you have the um, how this PID is linked. Okay, depend on the selection, you should be able to see more. Okay, the different parts. But let's just go for the PID. Here we just need to put some variables. In this case, I'm going to use just anything quickly, just to show you. Okay, just to show you how this uh, can work. Okay. This is just a quick thing so we can easily configure this and implement the not implement but just to show you the how it can be called okay so we have configured just one bit here you can use the system for example control uh room I don't know whatever you want uh, yes, I want to say the changes. So here we just need to use this operation block. Here you can use the symbol based on the one I have created or use the instance with space zero. Okay. Now, if I use, for example, another instance with one, we should have an error because that instance or that PID is not configured. So if we just link it over here, it says is not configured okay so that's the idea so if you see an error then there are some variables that are missing there so if we go back to the presentation we already covered this part and this is something important because sometimes you are trying to test the logic and you use a simulator but on the case of the PAD the simulator doesn't work you must have a real M221 in order to test the PAD okay that is mandatory. Um, we already opened a project 
check the PDA system, the different parts, just quickly show you, and then call the PID. So what we have seen today is a quick overview of the different parts um, of the PID that you need to configure. Okay, I just quickly explain that how you can call the PID and how the different parts of the PID inside the software, I link it to the control loop system that we have in our process. Okay, so that's the main goal of this part. So thank you very much for watching this video and I see you on the next one. Thank you.